Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to GUL's first online live demo uh, for our GUL screening product segment. So thank you all for your time in attending this. And so to start off with the presentation or the online demo, we have uh, Jackie Berry. She's our global distributor manager. She's based in the UK. So without further ado, I will pass this to Jackie. Uh, Jackie, over to you. Okay, um, a very good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, I hope you get a lot out of this, uh, this event. Um, Okay, so my name is Jackie Berry uh, and I'm the Global Distributor Manager for Guided Ultrasonics or GUL. Uh, we're the world leader in guided wave technology. Um, I know we're all keen to get on with the demo, um, but I think it would be a good start with, um, with to explain who we are and what we do. And I promise I'll try and take no more than 10 minutes. I'll run through it quite quickly. So our headquarters are in London and last year we celebrated our 20th year in business. Uh, we're a manufacturer and not an inspection company provider. Um, and this is where all our hardware, software, sensors are designed, developed and manufactured. Also, all the research and development is done here within the UK head office. Uh, but we have a strong academic link with Imperial College London, who have the world leading researchers in, wide, in, in guided wave technology. <clears throat> so in 2018, we decided to open up uh, two new offices, uh, one in America in Houston in Texas, one in Malaysia, KL, which is uh, where you're uh, where it's coming from today. Um, and this was enabled to enable us to support our client base locally, which was rapidly expanding. You can also see here that we're truly a global company with units on all seven continents, and we've sold over five and a half thousand systems and in over 50 countries. So um, this, is a, this is a good time to introduce the guys from the Asia Pacific office. Um, so what we've got is we have um, SH, who is the regional president. Uh, this is myself, although actually I'm based in the UK. We have Dr. Chen An, who's the regional head of technical and marketing, and who actually is the, uh, the gentleman who's going to be demonstrating the wave later today for you. And then we have Yang Yi and we have Paul, who are the sales engineers who operate across the region of Asia Pac and the Middle East. <clears throat> so I like this slide as it shows you our timeline for our product development and hopefully shows you that we are a very progressive company and that we don't stand still. Um, so very briefly, in 1986, it all started with a poorly understood signal at Imperial College. It took quite a few years then to develop a new product, which was called the Dolphin, um, along with uh, Solid SolidRing. By 1998, more and more knowledge was gained with the research and development done with uh, GUL and, and uh, Imperial College, which enabled us to create the WavePro software. And actually, we still use the WavePro software today, which again, you will see in the demonstration. In 1999, Gull was formed. So the next six years, we introduced a number of products. We, on, we, we made the WaveMaker SE16, uh, which actually we still have working today. So you can see how robust our equipment is. The G-Scan was for some rail equipment, which was actually a very specific application. The first subsea ring and our initial design for our per yeah, pins, sure. permanently installed monitoring systems. 2008, the G-Pins was launched, along with in 2010, some high temperature rings. By 2014, the fourth generation of the screening unit, the G4 Mini, uh, the WaveMaker G4 Mini, was introduced. And we continue to create more rings with more designs from our customers' requirements and requests. By 2016, the compact rings were introduced um, and they were to work alongside the other rings, but with the added benefits of being more portable, lightweight and easier to use. Then, of course, our newest member to the family was introduced in 2018. We added scanning to our portfolio and the QSR was born. Early next year, we'll also have a new system to enhance and work alongside the QSR for the inspection of smaller and larger diameters. <clears throat> so corrosion and erosion is a significant portion of the billion dollar problem that the oil and gas industry face. So all around, all our, all our uh, products are based around guided waves. 
and we have a number of solutions to choose from. We have screening, which is, where, which is what you'll learn more about today. We have scanning, which is a quantitative tool for corrosion under pipe supports. We have monitoring when the cost of accessing a pipe is much higher than the cost of inspection. And by performing repeat inspection, you can compare the results and monitor for any change in the condition of pipes. And then we have subsea, which has the benefit from our experience of the top side inspection, which now allows us to have a reliable modular system, which can be used both ROV and diver deployed. So today we're going to be talking about the screening tool, the WaveMaker G4 Mini and the Ring. And you can see here, the setup is really, really easy, the setup configuration. You have the laptop, you have the collector unit, and you have the ring on the pipe. And as I say, you'll see much more of this uh, later on. So we have two models of the WaveMaker instrument. We have the G4 Mini Base, and we have the G4 Mini Full. The base is actually classed as an entry level and has some limited features, whereas the G4 Mini Full gives you access to, option, to all the optional rings and sensors. The base actually is fully upgradable to a full version, but we, we introduce that because if you have a limited budget or um, you might not need the full list of features that the full gives, um, then the base can actually be a good choice. Um, and you mustn't forget that it still is very powerful and it's still compar comparable to anything else that you'll find on the market today. But you don't need to worry about that because what we do is we will help you choose the rings and the unit and the sensors that's right for you and your application. So here are just a few of the many clients around the world that already own a WaveMaker. And there are lots more. I just pulled out a few that had bought systems last year. And some of these, some of these companies actually own more than one system. And some of these companies um, also own the older systems as well. So let's talk a little bit about the scanning side of our business, which is the uh, QSR, the Quantitative Short Range Inspection for Cuts. The detection of corrosion in the pipe supports can typically be done by visual inspection. However, the problem our customers are facing is the ability to accurately size the, con the corrosion under the supports. The QSR will give you a nominal remaining wall thickness, which enables sizing for corrosion of fitness for service assessment. Currently, our QSR can be used on pipes uh, so of a diameter of 6 up to 24 inch and a pipe thickness of, third, of 6 mil to 13 mil. But as I've already mentioned in one of the uh, earlier slides, we are currently working on expanding this range uh, of pipe size. So again, this is another track record of who owns the QSR. Um, and again, there's, there's, there's more out there. Um, Oceaneering, for example, they own five. Uh, they currently have two working heavily in Australia. They have one in, uh, one in America and they have two in the UK. So as you can see, um, it's, 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 we've, we've been very successful. So the GPIMS, which is permanently, GOAL's permanently installed monitoring system. Monitoring, uh, the benefit of this is that the access to test points is only required once. You can easily compare the data at each test and you have the capability of measuring wall thickness on the sensor location. It's very easy to set up. Basically on this system you have a data collection unit, you have a data, you have a, a connection box and a sensor. We also offer a ATEX approved sensor um, for when you're in restricted areas and hazardous atmospheres may be present, so we can offer you all this system. And as you can see from here, very easily installed. Um, the sensor is now permanently installed on the pipe. The installation can be put back onto the pipe. So with our continued development of the permanently installed monitoring, it now means we also have a new system which operates from Wi-Fi and 4G and links to our goal monitoring studio. I'm not going to elaborate too much on this. We've got a lot more information that we could give you um, if you're interested in this product line, then talk to the guys um, you know, in, the coming, in the coming days or weeks. And again, finally, we have rail and we have sub-sea. 
And again, if you're interested in any of these applications, then please ask. Um, we do have lots more information on this. Um, but again, I wanted to concentrate more on the wave maker today. So I hope, uh, I hope that you've learned a lot. Uh, I did say I wasn't going to be long. I hope that wasn't too boring for you. Uh, but now you get to the really exciting bit, which is the uh, demonstration. So I'm going to hand you over to Chen An, and he will demonstrate live now how the WaveMaker G funnel can be used in the field. Um, we will answer all of your questions, uh, maybe at the end of the demo. Um, there is a chat page on here, so if you want to put them into the chat section, we'll come back to them later. Um, and if you can keep yourself all on mute, then at least uh, there's no interference and we can hear uh, and enjoy the demonstration from uh, Dr. Chen An. So I'd like to thank you very much for that and uh, I'm handing over back to the guys. Thank you very much, Jackie. And now for, for the main event, I will pass this uh, over to Chen An. Can you feel my video? There you go. Perfect. All right. Um, so today I will be giving you guys a demonstration or a live demonstration of GL screening. Today we'll be using our compact ring and we'll be testing on an 8 inch pipe over here. And to help us do that, we'll have our WaveMaker G4 Mini, which is the full edition that we have over here, which will be controlled by our laptop. Okay? So jumping straight into it, we will uh, start our timers and go for it. So we've got our ring over here. We're just going to attach it around the way. So the ring is secure now. Next, I'm going to change the adjust the orientation of the ring so that it's according to light or specification. Uh, since it's an inflatable ring, the next step is to inflate it with an air pump. So I've got here a hand pump. Uh, it can be any sort of pump, uh, whether it's a bicycle pump or an electric pump. Uh, as long as it can pump air, it shouldn't be an issue. So I'm going to be inflating it now. So for the compact ring, we'll be inflating it to three and a half bar or 50 psi. So the ring is on the pipe successfully. Um, the next thing we do is to complete the wiring setup from the G4 Mini to the compact. So with the GL screening system, we have we use Limo cables, so we don't use single FCX cables. Uh, using these Limo cables is pretty easy. We just simply take the corner, align it, take it in, like so, align it. And it's connected. Then the other end of the Limo cables will go and connect to the G4 Mini. So conventionally, we use the yellow cable for the A channel and the black for the B channel. All right, that's done. Next, we turn on the G4 Mini. Just push and hold the power button for a little bit, and it should turn on. Okay, and uh, the G4 Mini is full of tools for onboard diagnostics. We're just going to do a simple one today, which is a ring coupling test. So this will show us if the transduction between the uh, sorry, if the coupling between the transducers and the pipe is good. So for for me to do this test, I'll just get a, a small metal object such as a key, for example, and I'll just give it a light tap. And if you can see that the transducers light up, then we know that uh, the coupling is good. Okay. Um, and finally, for it to be controlled by a software, we have our uh, data cable over here, uh, which is USB based. So the other end comes here like this. All right. So I'm just going to connect my data cable to the G4 Mini, like this. And the other end, and the other end over here will connect to my laptop, all right? Like so, okay? And that's done. So now I need to set up my uh, screen recording. Um, I'll pass it over to Paul for a little while. So maybe I'll just share a little bit more. Uh, as you can see here, this is the contact rings. 
for those of you who has never seen our GR rings before, this is our compact rings. This is actually the newer version of the rings itself. So just to go into in depth, you can see that there's the modules. These modules are interchangeable, right? So if you are looking to buy more rings, you do not need to buy the full set of modules. You can actually interchange the modules between the ring itself. Okay. When it comes to the frequency, you see that there's two, you have the B and C. So what it means is that we are able to cater for more frequency without taking out the rings, changing the module. All you have to do is just change into the right frequency based on the application on uh, the site itself. So over here, I also have a second type of ring. This is for the smaller diameter pipe. So what you've seen early on is for the bigger diameter pipes. Those are actually for the eight inch. And this is actually for the four inch. What we have here is actually the four inch pipe. So just to share with you a little bit more about the solid rings, this is slightly different because the modules are inbuilt into the ring itself. There's no interchangeable modules. Okay. How it goes is that this is the top part of the solid ring. And this is the bottom part itself. And this is the connecting mechanism itself. And it sits on the pipe. And this is where the lemo cable goes into. Okay. So I think Shenan is already done. So let me just quickly go back to him and let him share the screen. All right. Hi, guys. So you can hear me, I hope. Okay. So the first thing I'll do is to double click on WavePro. Okay, so the G4 Mini has been automatically detected. So it's the, uh, what's that, sorry? So it's the uh, compact ring. So if you see over here where my mouse is, uh, the model and serial number of the ring is shown. Uh, so this is automatically inputted into the, uh, in, uh, into the report. Uh, so you don't have to import it by yourself, okay? So the first thing we do in our collection screen is to start filling out these uh, inspection notes. So for example, here, our site location is the GULAP office or the GUL uh, Asia Pacific office. Uh, the pipe is our pipe called the pipe rack bottom L. It's just the name of the pipe that we've given to it. Um, the datum is just a reference point. So in this case, it's the cut end, and it is roughly about 0.2 meters uh, from the end of the pipe. Uh, the positive direction here, we've just kept it as unspecified. Um, in the report notes, we will say, uh, you, you, here you input uh, the details about this inspection. So for example, you can say, this is our live GUL screening uh, demo, November 2020. Okay, and here we'll be using a standard uh, compact uh, uh, collection protocol. Okay, so these are just notes that you put in on site to remind yourself uh, or to, to, to make a record of information. Um, here is just information about the thickness of the pipe. Uh, we know it's a schedule 40, so we are estimating it's about 8.18 millimeters thick. Okay. Um, and the next thing we can do before we start collection is to perform uh, some ring checks. So WavePro allows you to do uh, diagnostic checks before you collect your results. So here you can run a capacitance check just to make sure everything's okay. Everything is nice and high. Um, you can also do a coupling check. So these are tests that you can conduct to see if your, uh, your equipment has been set up correctly uh, before you proceed. Uh, and these will be covered in the training courses, so don't worry too much. All right, um, here uh, we have a relatively short pipe, so we are only collecting data uh, 12 meters in each direction, so total inspection, potential inspection range of 24 meters. Uh, but this is arbitrary, you can set it as high as possible. The guide away, uh, the sensor will, will measure and record data for as long. So in this case, we just keep it at 12 meters, all right? And lastly, we go to advanced settings just to make sure that our number of averages is uh, something relatively high. So let's say four, okay? And we are good to go. So we hit collect when we are ready. Okay. 
sorry guys. Can you make sure I'm pinned again? Yep. All right, so uh, here's the collection screen. So if you look, if you guys look at the follow my mouse over here, if you look at the bottom left, you see the collection status, which is about 44% done right now. Uh, we've uh, 6.6 6 minutes have elapsed and we've got another approximately 0 0.5, 0 0.6 minutes to go. It's almost there now, just another 21 minutes to go. All right, now it's done. Okay, so once it's done, you will see a screen uh, like so. Uh, the first thing we will do is to just to go to the status tab, just to make sure that the, uh, the uh, collection was successful. So there are a couple of information, set of information that's available such as the balancing, raw data, capacitance. And these are data that is available uh, to help inspectors to show you if there are any errors. So for example here, no collection errors have been reported. So we know that the quality of the data will be good, okay? Now we go back to the analyze tab. We, uh, we go to our single large plot and we have something like this, okay? And this is what we refer to as our A scan. Okay, so I've got my little cheat sheet over here, uh, which has the pipe layout diagram. So you guys uh, on the other end of the call can have an idea of um, what the setup looks like. Okay, um, and this is not to scale. I'm just going to show you roughly where the ring is. So the ring is roughly here. Okay. All right, so we have got a cut end in the, in the uh, negative direction and we've got another, the other cut end on the positive direction. Okay, so the first thing we would do, um, uh, personally, I would remove all the existing features that Wave Pro has uh, automatically tried to define for you. Okay, and next I would start to input the important features in a screening test such as the uh, cut ends or the flange uh, in the guided wave terms they are more or less the same thing they indicate a hundred percent reflection um, so i would input the two cut ends over here all right and judging from the results we can see that if we use our measure tool we can see that the pipe is if you look if you guys look at the top left you can see that the pipe is, uh, this inspection is roughly 9.1 meters, which is correct. Okay, because this is a 9.1 meters plus pipe. Okay, um, and then we also put in our weld, because we have a weld called W1, like this. All right, all right, see, let's see what's next. Okay, next thing is to set the deck level. So DAC stands for Distance Amplitude uh, Correction Curve. Uh, so it's a calibration step in, uh, in a guided wave test that we'll have to do. And with the absolute calibration license that is provided by uh, GUL, uh, you can use this license to automatically help you to set the DAC levels if you have uh, the, the identified the correct pipe features. So in this case, all I'm gonna do to activate absolute calibration is I'm gonna left click on my weld in the diagram, take reverb reference, uh, before I do that, I'm just going to explain to you that these black dash lines represents the well deck and the blue dash line represents the uh, call deck. So these are very technical guide wave terms, but we're not going to be covering it in this video. But essentially, calibrating the position of these curves and the properties of these curves are very important to improve the accuracy of your test. Okay, And the absolute calibration license helps you to do that. So in order to activate it, we will just tick these three parameters over here and it's done okay so 
uh, using wave through absolute calibration, we can we will automatically uh, do that for you accurately. Okay. So now that's done. Um, I'm just going to blow this up a little. Okay. So the A scan is essentially a plot of the reflection of the guide wave uh, amplitude in the y axis and the x pi axial distance in the x axis. Okay. So if you look at distance zero, distance zero represents the position of the ring and you have uh, behind the ring, which is in the negative direction, is the cut end. So you can note, you can note that there is a very big reflection, which because a lot of, or most of the guided wave energy is reflected from the end, okay? The green bars, this green zone and the light gray zone represents the dead zone and the near field zone, uh, respectively. Um, essentially, we, we don't have data in the green zone and the amplitudes in the near field zones are distorted due to physics, okay? Um, and on the positive end, we see at position about eight meters, uh, that is the other end of the pipe, which is the cut end. So I'll go back to my diagram so you guys can have a look, okay? And we have our weld, okay? So what I've noticed, so guided wave is uh, very operator based and uh, interpretation is very important. That's why it's important to do these courses and it's important for GL training to set very high standards in training and certification um, because it is a, uh, currently it is a very operator dependent uh, test. And from this analysis, I can note that the, because of the black and the red trace, uh, which represents the, you know, the two different modes of guided waves. So there's the torsional and the flexural modes. Um, these two uh, signatures, uh, indicate some sort of defect that is apparent in the pipe, okay? So we're gonna be focusing more on that right now. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little so you guys can have a look, okay? So the ACE can, can, tell, can help you uh, determine the location of this defect. So it's roughly about 3.2 meters uh, from the ring or relative to the uh, weld, it is roughly about two meters, okay? I'm not sure if anybody can see, but if you look at the top left of the graph, there is a diff, it says diff distance of 2.04 meters, okay? Now, um, uh, aside from the A scan, uh, the WavePro software also gives you, uh, or GL screening gives you the circumferential position of this defect so that as an inspector, you have more information on how to follow up this defect. Okay, so um, here is the unrolled pipe display and I am just going to blow this up a little. Okay, and I'm going to, uh, this is not going to be a full analysis because this is just a screening demo. But now I've, that I've adjusted the, uh, the unrolled pipe display, which basically plots the uh, circumferential position of the pipe against distance and it's three dimensional so there's a color uh, on top of this and the you know the color represent the uh, intensity of the of the amplitude uh, of the waves as a function of space okay so what this plot is essentially telling us is that there is uh, the defect is concentrated in the 12 o'clock orientation of the pipe okay so what we're going to do now is we are going to do what any good inspectors will do and we will follow it up. So from what we can, we can summarize from this set of results is that there is a defect roughly two meters behind the weld. Oops, oh, there's a defect that is two meters behind the weld. So all this camera. Uh, so we've got a weld over here. Uh, all this tiny set of and you've got two meters uh, uh, pulled out on the stick, right? And if you follow to the end of the uh, stick, you'll see our artificial defect, which is at the 12 o'clock orientation. Okay? So, just to summarize, what we've done here today, what we've done here today is we use the uh, compact ring, which is the 8 inch version. Uh, to perform GL screening test. Uh, to do so, we will attach an inflatable ring onto the 
pipe, we will inflate it with air to allow the transducers to have pressure on the pipe. One thing to note, uh, compared to ultrasound or ultrasonic inspection, we don't use any couplings. Uh, with the compact ring, it's lower in profile, uh, it's lighter than traditional rings, and most importantly, we use integrated wiring. We don't have any odd wiring sticking out everywhere. The setup is simple, we just connect our demo cables. Okay, so if I wanted to repeat this test using a different uh, range of frequencies, I would just unplug this and I'll connect it to uh, the other connection and I'll repeat the entire test. Okay, and with the G4 Mini, uh, which is our most advanced and versatile wave screening tool, uh, it allows you to use a whole range of rings, uh, including the compact and the solid rings and other types of rings that are available. And in conclusion, uh, geo screening is a tool to help you accurately locate the axial position, so in this case, two meters from the well, and also the orientation of the defect or the circumferential position of the defect. In this case, it's a localized uh, defect, uh, artificial defect, which is about one millimeter, one inch by one inch uh, in width and length, and roughly about two millimeters. And that is the Okay, uh, thank you, Chenan, for the comprehensive presentation. And um, so I hope that you all have learned something on regarding our technology and to see how easy it is to set up the entire system. So I'm sure that it takes about 10 to 15 minutes for Chen An to set up, to have the entire setup as well as performing data analysis and collecting the data just now. So as you all can see, it's a relatively straightforward procedures. And of course, our GUL, uh, we provide comprehensive training to uh, our customers. So teaching them how to use the software as well as the entire system, like what Chen An just did, it's a comprehensive course. And now moving on to the next agenda, um, we are fortunate enough to have uh, our customer, one of our customer, SG, SGS Malaysia. So Mr. Wan Adlan is uh, on this call with us and we are fortunate enough to have him to share some of his experience with us, uh, with GUL. So uh, Mr. Wan Adlan, uh, if you're free, do you, uh, can you unmute yourself and probably share some of the experience you have with GUL? Yeah, sure. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Uh, yes, I can hear you well. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, be I believe uh, this video call has been done throughout the, uh, I, I can say, half of the world, right? From uh, UK to Indonesia? Yes, because yes. we have uh, customers from the Middle East as well and Southeast Asia and China as well. So we have customers basically covering Asia Pacific and Middle East, so you can put it this way. Okay. So um, just want to ask some of your experience with uh, GUL. So may I know when did uh, you all start using GUL's equipment, uh, SGS Malaysia? Okay, we started using G3 in 2008. And then uh, our first uh, operator, we sent it to GAL in London for training. And then after that, in 2009, we had another training in Malaysia and then uh, it involved uh, six personnel from uh, all over SGS, uh, two from Malaysia, two from Pakistan and two from China. And then uh, the uh, trainer from uh, GL is uh, Ben, Ben Otubun. I believe he's here. Because I can, I can, I can see his face right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ben is in fact on this call as well. Yeah, yeah. Ben is my chief actually. <laughs> and then uh, I, I have uh, Shahruddin, our girl level two. And uh, and then from 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 our point of view, uh, girl machine is it, easy to use, easy setup. But the interpret interpretation is heavily depending on the. Uh, Operator's experience. The more experienced he is, and then the more um, good uh, data he can produce. Right. So, so your level two inspector has been trained by Ben, I suppose, as well. Yep. Yep. 
both level one and level two by band. I see. So during uh, back then, there was six inspectors that was being trained, and so so far, how was your experience with uh, GUL uh, in using our equipment? Um, you mind sharing further on that? Yeah, hey, uh, for for me, for my 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 my, my personal um, I thought the gal is is good. It's, it's, I can say it's excellent to uh, for for screening a long pipe above ground long pipe. Um, because we have, we have we have experienced screening a pipe uh, in Algeria, it's hundreds of kilometers. Using GUL's equipment. Yep. Uh, at that time, we are using both G3 and G4. I see. I see. Okay. Um, and regarding the training that you all get, like, do you have any feedback on the training that you all have received uh, so far from GUL? Um, Yep. So, um, yeah. Do you have any feedback on the training? Uh, whether is it? Do you think it's sufficient in giving you the right confidence in managing the the equipment at site and analyzing the data? Okay. If I if you are com comparing between GAL and conventional UT, um, setting up GAL is easier, but interpretation GAL is more. I can say um, it's harder than the uh, conventional UT. And, and this improves with the experience, I, I believe. Yes, yes. And then if you are if you are if you are you are expecting to send your, your guy for training, you have to make sure that they are all well versed in UT. I see. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Wan Alan, for sharing on your experience and thank you for attending as well. So uh, to the rest of the audience, if you all have any form of uh, questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat box and we have our experts here in answering them. Or yeah, so please feel free to drop the questions in the chat box and we will address to them. Sorry, Mr. Wan, uh, Wan Alan. So I have a question to ask. So you said that um, the analysis of the data is more complicated, but it seems like you're very happy with the equipment because you've been using it since 2008. So, so how does that, uh, although the analysis is more complex, does that mean that our equipment is still reliable enough despite the complexity of the data? Yes, I can see, yes. Okay, that's good. Yep. The equipment is very good. I, 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 I don't see that I can compare with any other equipment in the market right now that can uh, they, they, they can do better than GAL screening system. Thank you, Mr. Wan. Yeah, man, 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 from my personal view also, I've, I've compared side by side in between GAL and Teletest. And then I can say that Teletest nothing. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> But can you can you also elaborate a bit more? I mean, since you are a user for both Teletest and uh, GUL, so what's what's the experience like? Just curious. I'm sure a lot of our customers here are also curious about the same question. So what makes the difference? What is the deal breaker between the two systems? Okay. Um, the the the, uh, the major part I can see that is if if you are screening a, a pipe on the pipe rack and then the space in between. For GAL, you can squeeze as small as 50 mm space. But for Sally test, you, you, you need to have at least, I think, 100 mm spacing. Mm. Okay. Mm. And then and then GAL, you are using the manual palm. But for Sally test, you're using the auto palm. And then, for, for example, if you are facing some problem with your, with your equipment at site, and then, and then you cannot palm the, you, you cannot palm the, 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 the rings. And then how can you do the job? But for GAL, you can always uh, bring another set of palm, hand palm, for, for, for backup. Uh, what about uh, in terms of installing the equipment, uh, like putting the rings onto the pipe? Yep. For God, I think maybe one minute you can install the ring, but for the litest, <laughs> it takes you ages. <laughs> 
yeah, yeah. because the, because the, the teletext, they, they got so many cables in between the transistors, but for God, no. So it's a, uh, yeah, our design is cable free and to minimize any form of accidents that yes. can be caused at site because I believe one of, if one of the cables snapped, basically the entire inspection will have to be rescheduled. Yes, and then for Gal, if let's say in your rings, you got one or two, one or a few models, um, it's not working, but the, the, the machine still can uh, able to collect data for you. Um, Mr. Wan, so yep. you've been using our equipment for so long, right? So I have this one customer that is asking, mm. what, in your opinion, are some of the things that we can improve on to make our current system even better? Okay, because now I can see that you, are, you guys already manufactured G4. This is, this, that is handy and then easy to carry out. Then that's, that's good. Yeah. You are referring to the G4 Mini, right? The much newer and smaller version. Yeah, G4 yeah. Mini. Okay. Mm -mm, G4 Mini, yes. Mm. So, apart from that... Then that, that's very helpful, actually. Yeah. Uh, so, apart from that, do you have any um, feedback that you think we can improve on or in terms of uh, our product? Mm. No. no. So far... <laughs> Because interpretation is easy. Once, 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 once you've got hand, hands on on the equipment itself, and then I think the infestation is, is you, you can catch, catch it up very quickly okay. after some jobs. Right. So mm. it gets better by practicing and uh, multiple jobs. So despite you mentioned at the beginning that it can be complex, but of course it improves and it gets easier the more you do it, I believe. Yep. Yep. Okay, thank, thank you for your honest feedback and opinion and sharing. Okay. And then the one, one more thing that I like, like most about Gali Kimon is it's very robust. I've owned the G3 since 2008 and then it never had any problem. Right. Can you say, can you say the same for another equipment that you own? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, I, can, I can say no. Because, uh, because in the, here in Malaysia, we got, we got, we got so many type of machines. We got MFL, we got uh, 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 auto, auto UT, but yeah. uh, none of that can beat GAL in terms of reliability. I see. Yeah, I remember when I visited your office just one month ago that you were still showing me that the G3 is still operating and you are yes. still on that side as well. Mm. And then we, we, have, we have brought the G3 all over the world. <laughs> From Algeria to Guam to Saipan to Palau to New Zealand. Wow. <laughs> all right. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Juan, for your sharing on, and your honest feedback on our equipment. And we're very thankful for you to have you on our uh, live demo session. And so... Um, if there's any other questions from other people, uh, please feel free to drop them in the chat box. And otherwise, uh, you can also contact me or any of our sales team. We will be happy to address your question as well. So I think, I think most of us here are based on the invitation of either Yen Yi or myself. So for those of you that has been hearing my voice over the call, I'm Paul. Uh, I believe half of, half of the participants in today's call is from my end. So if you have any question, uh, be it on technical or be it on commercial, or if you want to talk to Mr. Wan for better referrals, um, maybe Mr. Wan, are you open for, for queries from some of the customers here? Yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. Okay, uh, okay. so we, we have a question coming in. So, okay, Mr. Omar from the Middle East, he's asking how long can the, wife, can the wave penetrate through the pipe? 
Okay. Um, so I, th this is uh, Dr. Choi. Yeah. So I believe the question, I guess, I assume is around the inspection range of the system. Uh, so inspection range, uh, is, it, it will depend on the pipe conditions. Uh, so for example, in a typically good pipe, uh, a straight pipe, you can screen you know, up to 100 meters in both direction. Um, but if on the other end of the spectrum, if you have, uh, say, a buried pipe set up where the attenuation is high, so attenuation means the loss of uh, guide wave energy to the uh, surrounding materials, then you lose energy and therefore the inspection range is a lot shorter. So for buried pipes, it could be around you know, 10 meters in each direction. So it depends on, on, uh, on the pipe configuration or the pipe uh, condition that you are inspecting. Yes, so uh, both internal and external defects can be detected because guided wave screening operates on the principle of uh, detecting cross-sectional area changes. So if there's anything that induces a cross-sectional area change within the pipe, so for example, be it a weld or, 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 or stress in the pipe, such as at the supports or clamp supports, or in the case of uh, internal corrosion or external corrosion, because there is a change in cross-section, then we get a reflection from uh, the... So in, 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 a, in short, yes, we can detect both internal and external defects. So, uh, hi, uh, Mohammed. So from, uh, for inspection, for GL screening, uh, we only inspect uh up to the first band so after the uh second band well we would call the end of inspection range um uh, this is because the guided wave signals would be distorted so your guided wave modes would no longer be a nice uh, torsional mode um, and of course the size of the pipe and the uh and the bend angle also plays a, a, a role. But essentially, in, in general, we would say that the end of inspection test range would be after the second bend weld. So for example, if you have a defect at the bend itself, so if let's say you have, you're looking for erosion defects at a bend, then we can uh, detect it uh, if there's erosion defects at the bend. But anything, any defects after the bend uh, would not be suitable for GL screening. Uh, so could you share some detail about the monitoring system? Okay, um, I think we would probably have a separate session on monitoring. Uh, today is focused on screening, uh, but essentially the principles are uh, similar because um, essentially with monitoring, we it's the same thing as you saw with the screening, except the rings, instead of the rings being attached and removed from the pipe, the rings would be permanently installed onto the pipe, which gives you repeat, repeatability in data collection uh, and allows you to uh, practice or apply uh, monitoring algorithms in order to further improve the detection sensitivity up to 10%, uh, so, sorry, up to 10 times more. So for example, uh, when we talk about screening, we have a detection sensitivity uh, of 5% cross-sectional area change. This is our reliable detection sensitivity, uh, statistically speaking. Uh, but with monitoring, uh, you can detect up to as small as half a percent of cross-sectional area change. And that is about uh, 10 times uh, more sensitive. Um, and of course, with the GL monitoring system, uh, since the rings are permanently installed, then uh, you would save a lot of uh, cost and uh, time on repeat access. Right, on repeat access. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, there's a lot of uh, benefits for uh, monitoring. So maybe uh, Yang Yi can uh, contact you directly and talk about monitoring. Uh, but it's it is a uh, it is a, a different or a, it's 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 slightly different from screening with a lot more advantages.
Yep. So these are all our business segments. So if you have anything in particular that you would like to know better, uh, feel free, always feel free to contact us. Uh, and we can definitely schedule a presentation that is tailored to the specific uh, application that you're looking for. If, for example, you're looking for our GUL monitoring, we can schedule a presentation and run you through the advantages of our uh, of using a monitoring system. So um, feel free to contact us and we can schedule something to present to you from there. Um, are there any further questions? Yes, of course, uh, we'll be looking into scheduling live demo for scanning as well as uh, monitoring in the future. And this is the first part of the live demo, which is on GUL screening. So there's another question from Muhammad. Yes. Uh... So um, is the question, how do you set a datum? Uh, the datum is, is just, you just have a point where you use as a reference so that uh, in your inspection notes, you have a reference of where you last put the ring. Uh, typically you can mark it on, uh, you can refer to a pipe support or another pipe feature. Um, but for inspection of uh, corrosion under pipes, uh, insulated pipes. This was actually the uh, the drive behind the idea of GL screening. So the main design, the main application purpose for GL screening was for insulated pipes, as you can see in the in the in the photo for GL screening. Um, and this is to detect corrosion under insulation. Uh, so typically, you would have to remove. Uh, uh, partial removal of the insulation materials in order for the screening uh, tool or the compact ring or your transducer ring to be attached to the pipe. Um, then after the inspection, uh, you can just reapply the uh, insulation layer. And I think, I believe about uh, less than half a meter of insulation materials will need to be removed or less to carry out the test for insulation insulated pipes. Um, yeah, for the demo for scanning and monitoring, I, we already have a scanning video as well, so maybe you can have a look at that, uh, but we will be sure to schedule, schedule a, a live demo session as well. Um, so essentially the principles of screening, monitoring and sub C is quite similar uh, because the ring of transducers are attached around the pipe. Um, essentially with monitoring, you, the rings are permanently installed and with sub C, they are, uh, we can apply both screening or monitoring principles uh, on sub C pipes. Uh, scanning on the other, is our, one of our latest product lines and it's the, uh, uh, and it's our latest products out there. So uh, I hope everyone uh, found the live screening demo useful. Um, I believe we will be sending some feedback forms on this. This is actually, I believe, our first live screening demo. Um, I'm not sure whether the ASNT guys uh, or, or girls did the a live demo at ASNT this year, but uh, I believe this is our, but this is my live first live screening demo, and it's our first live screening demo from our GUL KL office here in Malaysia. Um, and I believe that uh, if you guys give good feedback on this, then we will uh, hope to improve it um, and uh, arrange for more frequent or less frequent uh, demos, depending on how you guys found it. Uh, but hopefully what um, I've demonstrated uh, by doing by doing the setup is that it's it's relative it's a very easy equipment to use. Um, if you've noticed that um, I in print in theory I, it's a one man job. Uh, a single person can handle an eight inch ring 
uh, I can attach the ring on by my own. I can, you know, set it up. I can process everything on my own. So it's it's very easy to do. But of course, in reality, you have a buddy system and you have two people on site to help you, which will make things a lot faster and reduce your chances of errors. Um, but yeah, I hope everybody had a good, uh, found this uh, session useful. And I will pass it back to Yan Yi. Okay, uh, thank you, Chenan, and for the, especially for the demo today. Um, so, if there are no further questions, I believe this shall be the end of our first ever live demo. And thank you all for participating and making this a remarkable one for GUL. Uh, if you have any further questions, maybe somewhere down the road or later on where you think about this entire demo and you found out that you have some questions, please feel free to drop, <coughs> drop them to us and we'll be happy to address them. And once again, thank you all for attending uh, to GUL's first ever live screening demo. And stay safe and take care. Thank you, everyone.